When my wife and I first bought our house about 15 years ago, I was a little reluctant to buy a 100-year-old house uh, that needed some work. But I figured I'm, I'm pretty handy. I can, I can deal with whatever comes up. And so uh, for the first couple of years, that was pretty much the case until one time my wife opens up the door to the basement and she sees what appears to be a wooden floor instead of the normal concrete floor. It's like a little unfinished cellar. And she realizes she's not looking at the basement floor. She's looking at the basement ceiling reflected off the foot and a half deep water that had flooded the basement floor. And it wasn't just water. Our sewer pipe, the pipe that connects our house to the public sewer system, had clogged up. And so for the last couple of days, everything that had gone down our, our sinks and showers and uh, down our toilets had just gone right into the basement. And so then I'm down there with, I've got waders on and I've got all my plumbing tools and I've got a submersible pump and I've, I've got one of these pipe snake things that can dig the clog out and I get it all, I get it all draining and I get everything hosed off and scrubbed and bleached and cleaned up and then a couple years later it happens again. Uh, this time we catch it really early so I'm able to just hit it with like a water blasting tool and it knocks the clog loose. But sure enough, eventually, it happens again and I can't get it unclogged. I'm trying every kind of trick I can come up with. Uh, and apparently the clog is farther down the pipe than any of my tools can reach. And so I have to call a plumber. And they come out with a big heavy duty tool that goes and it just digs everything out of the pipe and gets it completely cleared out, right? And it gets it draining real nice. And well, it, they pulled a lot of really gross nasty stuff out of that pipe that we had put down our drain, right? And so since then, we've tried to be a lot more careful of the stuff that we, we flush down our toilets and, and send down our, our drains. Uh, but it really got me thinking about, what about all the stuff that, that does make it down that pipe now that it's all cleared out, all the stuff that I really shouldn't be flushing, not just out of my house, out of, out of everybody's houses. Can that stuff ever cause a problem once it gets into the sewer system? Like, can the sewer itself actually get clogged up? Well, what do you suppose this is? I'll give you a hint. This one is 800 feet long, and it weighs about 130 tons. And here's another one. This one is attached to the top of the inside of a sewer pipe. And here's a worker holding a chunk of one of them. These are what are being referred to as fat bergs. These are deposits of fat, oil, and grease that are currently showing up in our sewer systems. And this problem has gotten especially bad recently. But what exactly are they? And how did they get there? Most of us don't really think that much about what happens when we flush our toilets. Everything just goes away. It disappears. We really only think about it when it doesn't, you know, or when it comes back up. But it does have to go somewhere. And if your toilet is connected to a public sewer system, uh, then it goes someplace like this. It's just a typical wastewater treatment facility. These are in every city and town. And at these facilities, our wastewater passes through a series of tanks and chambers uh, where the solids and liquids get separated and where they're introduced to a variety of microbes that consume the organic material. They eat our poop. They eat our toilet paper. And once we've gotten them to devour as much of this as we can and we've cleaned and prepared the water for release back into nature, uh, those leftover solids are they're sometimes used for biofuel or fertilizer, uh, oftentimes end up incinerated or, or sent to a landfill. Uh, but it might have occurred to you there's something missing from this whole process. We all know there's a lot more stuff that goes down the drain than that. What about the toy your toddler flushed? What about all the paper towels and wet wipes and plastic bags and all the other trash that we all know shouldn't be going down the drain. We might not know why. Well, all that stuff has to be removed before the wastewater can enter the facility. So there's a system of grates and screens and conveyors that extract that non-dispersible material, which also generally ends up incinerated or, or sent to a landfill. But the problem is, not everything makes it that far. There are a lot of pipes between all the, the toilets and the wastewater facilities. A lot of places for things to go wrong. Places for things to get stuck. You see, 
our poop gives off hydrogen sulfide, among other things. V very little chemistry, I, I swear. Now, there are a lot of bacteria that really love hydrogen sulfide, so they, they take in that, that hydrogen, they stick to the walls of our sewers, and they take that hydrogen sulfide in. But unfortunately, these bacteria give off sulfuric acid, which deteriorates the pipes and the joints and not only damages them, it causes them to leach various minerals and metallic sulfates into the wastewater. And these sulfates attach themselves to the fatty acid chains in the grease and in the oil, and it makes them insoluble. And then they cling to the walls of our sewer pipes, and, and they, they build up, and they build up and congeal, and they harden, and eventually they build up so much, bonded together with all the fibrous material, that they clog up the sewers and they cause everyone's drains to back up. According to the New York City Department of Environmental Protection, of the nearly 3,000 reported sewer backups that they had in 2018, 75% were attributed to grease deposits. And this is an expensive problem to fix. The San Francisco Public Utilities Commission estimates their city spends about $4 million a year dealing with this problem, cleaning it up, fixing the damage that it causes, in New York City, that number is closer to $20 million. Same thing's happening in cities and towns all around the world now. But what can we do about this? How can we beat these fat birds? Well, the first thing you have to do is not put grease and oil down your drain. To cool it off, throw it in the trash, or find a way to reuse it or recycle it. But whatever you do, don't put it down your drain. Same thing goes for any other kind of chemicals like um, medications, cleaning supplies. Paint, just because something's liquid does not mean it should go down the drain. Secondly, stop flushing paper towels, uh, diapers, hygiene products, uh, wet wipes, not even ones that say flushable on them. They, they'll normally make it out of your house, usually, but they won't break down in the wastewater in the sewer system the way that toilet paper does. In fact, the only things you should be flushing down your toilet are your own waste and toilet paper. That's it. Toilet paper is specifically designed to break down as much as possible in the wastewater. But that actually brings up another problem. You see, here in the United States, we already use more toilet paper than any other country on Earth, both as a whole and per person. We average 141 rolls apiece per year. That's like a triple roll a week for each of us. And, tr and toilet paper, it comes from trees. It's made of wood pulp. The World Wildlife Fund estimates that nearly 30,000 trees get cut down every day just for the world's toilet paper supply. What are we supposed to do about that? Can we just stop using toilet paper? You could get one of these. It's a deluxe toilet. It's got a built-in bidet sprayer and blows, sprays water on your butt and blows warm air to dry. And you don't even need any toilet paper at all. It's got a heated seat on it, I think probably plays music. But you don't actually have to go all out like that. You can get toilet seats now that have the sprayer and the dryer, and you can just get uh, bidet sprayer attachments now that hook your toilet. They use the same seat that you already have. But if you're not actually ready to give up the toilet paper just yet, you've got a few more sustainable options for that as well. Uh, there are companies now that are making recycled paper uh, into toilet paper. You can also now buy toilet paper that's made from bamboo. Uh, bamboo pulp can be made into most of the same stuff nowadays that wood pulp can. Uh, it's a far more renewable, more sustainable crop than wood is, much better for the environment. And both recycled and bamboo toilet paper are basically indistinguishable now and comparable in price to regular wood toilet paper. So with just a few minor changes to our habits and our lifestyles, I think that we can all poop and flush a little bit more responsibly, and hopefully we can beat those fat bergs. Thanks.